breaking news into CBS Sports HQ, Russell Wilson plans to sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It'll be a one-year deal with the Broncos still on the hook for $38 million this season. Russ threw for 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions for Denver last season before being benched by week 16. He now looks for a fresh start out in Pittsburgh. joined by CBS Sports NFL analyst Will Brinson and Emery Hunt following this breaking news of Russ's next chapter, which happens to be in Pittsburgh. Guys, we knew coming into this that there were going to be several suitors for Wilson and free agency reportedly met with the Giants. We know there was interest with the Raiders and now also the Steelers. But Emery, I'm going to kick this to you first. What do you make of this news and this move for Pittsburgh? I love it for Pittsburgh because when you look at that division, they needed someone like Russell Wilson. It puts now the entire division in play to get to the postseason this upcoming season. And for me, we look at what Russell Wilson will have now in Pittsburgh that he didn't have in Denver, a competent run game. Two backs that can really run the football. He's going to have some excellent options at wide receiver, some vertical threats. He brings a deep ball in play. The defense is going to be the defense. I think this is what exactly the Steelers need, and I think they got a good one in Russell Wilson. Yeah, I, I'm with Emory here. I think it makes sense in in the totality of Ross to the Steelers. But here's the thing. It's midnight on Sunday, and we're doing this. This is Russell Wilson trying to win the passive-aggressive source-off against Sean Payton that, that, that's been going on the entire offseason. He said he was taking the vet minimum. He's going to the best spot for sure. This Steelers team will be better, but my goodness, why are you doing this, Russell? Why at midnight on Sunday are you doing this ahead of free agency? It's a little egotistical for me, and I'm pretty, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> and, and you got to think about he also does this on a day where we just lost an hour of sleep. He doesn't want any of us to have any sleep, clearly, on this Sunday evening. But uh, looking at his fit and, and considering the changes that the Steelers have made this offseason, now new offensive coordinator Arthur Smith at the helm. How do you guys, and I'm going to go back to you, Will, how do you see him fitting with Arthur Smith? Yeah, I mean, from an, like a team standpoint it makes total sense you put russ in and deontay johnson on the trade block now but you have Najee harris and jalen warren two guys who can really you know like operate as sort of a, yeah, i don't know combo marshall lynch style stuff a, a pounder and then a guy who takes it like a, a receiver of the backfield and you also have good pass catchers a great tight end at pat fryer with it makes sense that russ can be this handed off throw it deep on play action guy and so yes it all as long as tj watt is healthy this is a good fit but yeah i just i just wonder emory I just wonder, why is Russ signing so quickly? Hmm. Well, here's the thing, because the draft is approaching, and we know there's a pending guy in Chicago that may still be out there, and you don't want to play yourself against a younger player that has more upside, so you better take what you can get right away. But you touched on the fit, man. We talked about the run game. George Pickens is one of the best vertical threats in the game today. He just didn't get the opportunity with what they had in the depth chart last couple of seasons in Pittsburgh. Now you have the deep ball in play. You talked about fire move. Darnell Washington is someone now we can keep an eye on as a, a guy who's going to improve in his second season. And Arthur Smith, we know, can call plays. He's now the OC and not the head coach trying to be the OC as well. So this is going to work out perfect for Russ, for the Steelers. Their defense is either their offense to help them out a couple times a game. I think we'll get that in. Contrary to popular belief, Russell Wilson actually played well last season. Yeah, uh, well, around 25 touchdowns to eight interceptions. It was not a terrible outing, and things certainly started to move upward for them in the latter half of that season. But if you look at what happens next year and looking at the schedule, I know schedules aren't released until May. <laughs> However, Steelers are set to meet with the Broncos in 2024. Uh, will, how do you think he will be received from the Broncos fans? Um, not well. Uh, I mean, look, look, it can't go worse than the revenge game against the Seahawks when I was it was like like six to three going into over to like right before overtime. I would I would think that the Broncos fans 
are going to be staring at that $82 million cap hit and or like, well, it's like 45, uh, 37, I think. If you split it up, if you post June, they're not going to appreciate that. Of course not. So it's more than likely that he's going to be booed by Broncos fans. But to Emory's point, George Pickens down the field. You've got a lot of good receivers. You're rushed in a comfortable system. The Steelers are in a much better position than the Broncos right now. Yeah, Pittsburgh is going to go in there and, and talk it all kind of smack. Like, we we got our franchise guy, and we're going to make Denver pay for it, right? So they got him for the 20-year rental. Denver is holding the bulk of that money uh, this upcoming season. Yeah, he's not going to be well-received because fans are fans and just cheer for who's in a jersey. But if you're Pittsburgh, you're ecstatic because you have a guy that can help you not only win the division, but also get to the postseason and make a serious run. I still feel like Russell Wilson has a lot left to give in a tank he is a future first ballot hall of famer this is going to be a great matchup and i'm glad we got kicked off at midnight because now we get to talk about this all day the next day on all the different uh cbs sports networks <laughs> yeah we get some time to sleep on it and come back with more thoughts on this move but also you talk about will uh how he might be received from broncos fans and, and you're absolutely right oh 38 million from denver so uh, I'm, I'm sure they probably aren't the happiest with russ right now but also i think back to when he did go to denver the amount of excitement and the hype surrounding him i don't know about you guys but is there any sense of maybe tempering expectations considering how it was that first time around and now we're kind of going through this again after he left Seattle to Denver and now uh, to Pittsburgh but guys I'm going to put you on the spot here and uh, Emory I'm coming to you first if you could set me a number how many wins do you see for Pittsburgh this year now with Russ at the helm and considering this is a, a very very talented AFC North first of all Mike Tomlin got nine wins out of that roster we saw last year that quarterback room which included all three of us in there so the baseline is nine, <laughs> but now you add Russ. I'm going to go ahead and add one more on top of oh. that and go 10. That's an easy number. I think they can get 10 with the defense where we expect it to be as long as T.J. Watt is healthy and also an offense with what we just outlined all throughout this segment. They should win 10 games by far, and this is a division that no one will want to face. They beat up on everybody else outside of the division, and they're very competitive and beat up on each other within it, but they do a good job of finding ways to win games they don't, they, they're not supposed to. So 10 is a number for me for Pittsburgh. I'll set it at eight and a half. And that's easy because we're talking about Mike Tomlin has a winning record every single year. Do you want to bet against Mike Tomlin having or not having a winning record this year? Eight and a half over under. I'll take the over with Russell Wilson. All right. I'm, I'm looking at their uh, the Steelers a tentative schedule for the 2024 season. I mean, obviously they have their division, but also facing teams like the Cowboys, the Chiefs, you have the Chargers, Giants, Jets in the mix for 2024. So it should be an interesting uh, slate. We have over eight and a half, potentially 10 wins with Russ at the helm. It's going to make for some good football, you guys, in 2024. I'm looking forward to it. Guys, thanks for staying up late with us. Appreciate the insight. Well, taking a look at Russell Wilson's numbers last season, I, I know a lot of negativity comes when it, in terms of Russ and his performance and his time in Denver, but in 2024, seven wins to eight losses, that was the third worst rank in his career. Had a 66% completion percentage, 26 touchdowns to eight interceptions, averaging 6.9 yards per attempt. That, that was the worst mark in his career. The fellas believing that Pittsburgh can certainly turn a page with the weapons that they have, and I'm certain Russell Wilson and Pittsburgh both anticipating a better turn this time around.